For the last couple of days I've been here, the Dead Sea in Jordan, 400 meters below sea level. But uh, around 10 o'clock every night, my phone suddenly decides that I am in fact in Cairo in Egypt, which is over 500 kilometers away. And uh, the reason for that is all to do with, uh, it's all to do with politics and humans and GPS, because uh, six miles across the Dead Sea over behind me, uh, that's the West Bank of occupied Palestine. And uh, if you've been following the news, you know that uh, things around this part of the world are a little scary right now for a lot of people. And so the Israeli Defense Force has been jamming GPS signals. Now what this, uh, the way that this works, well, the way GPS works is uh, it's a pretty simple principle with some amazing engineering attached to it. The, uh, imagine that we are, let's go back to England for a moment. We're out on a Sunday walk in the English countryside and we get lost. We are lost in the forest. We have no idea where we are. All we can see is trees, but we can hear the sound of the church bells. And uh, the church bells in this part of England, they are very, very precise. They ring exactly on the hour. And we have our Casio digital wristwatch. And uh, we can recognize the churches from the sound of the bell. The bell of St. Gertrude's church sounds like this. The bell of St. Penfold's church sounds like this. And the bell of St. SpongeBob's church sounds like this. And so at exactly one o'clock, we are gonna look at our Casio digital wristwatch and we are gonna listen for the church bells. The bell of St. Gertrude's Church, we hear that three seconds after one. We know the speed of sound. We know how far we are from St. Gertrude's Church. Now that doesn't really help us. All it tells us we are somewhere on this circle here. We need more data. So we listen for the bell of St. Penfold's Church. That one's four seconds after one o'clock. So that means we are somewhere on the two points where these two circles intersect. We need another data point. We listen out after five seconds, we hear St. SpongeBob's bell. That means we know exactly where we are. Now, uh, we're oversimplifying here. When GPS does this for real, one, they're not churches, they're satellites. Two, it's not the speed of sound, it's the speed of light. Three, it's not your Casio digital wristwatch, it's the GPS chip inside your phone or your vehicle's satellite navigation system. And uh, because we need to calculate altitude as well, you need a fourth, possibly a fifth signal to be able to lock onto. But fundamentally, that's how it works. It's this relatively simple idea from geometry. If you know your location, your distance from a number of fixed points, you can determine your location. And then the engineering necessary to put fixed points literally in outer space orbiting around planet Earth. Now, GPS is quite amazing. You don't need a subscription to use it. You don't need to create an account or register an idea or anything. You just need a device that can pick up these radio transmissions from space. The problem is, transmissions are very faint. They are very, very susceptible to jamming and interference. There are folks out there, delivery drivers and things, who buy little GPS jamming devices they put in their trucks because uh, they don't want their employers monitoring their location 24 hours of every day. They don't want to be able to drop off the grid for a little while. And what's been happening here is about 10 o'clock every night, the uh, Israeli Defense Force, at least we assume it's them. There's not exactly a press release you can read about this. Um, they are switching on a massively high-powered GPS jammer, which is just knocking out the signal for everybody's phones in the entire area. Uh, there's tourists in Amman who have been saying they've been trying to get uh, taxis, you know, using Uber and like ride-hailing services, and they can't because the app thinks they're in another country. The app thinks they're in, in Egypt or the app thinks they're in Lebanon. There's uh, food delivery services here that use, when you place an order for your order of pizza, uses GPS to work out where you are, so they know where to send the pizza. And then when the delivery driver gets there, the coordinates match, so they know the pizza's been delivered. All that stuff stopped working, and so they're having to resort to making manual phone calls to determine that people's, uh, people's pizza got through. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, a sort of interesting situation in all kinds of ways, but also it's one of those things that uh, you build any kind of apps that rely on GPS. Did you ever think, what are you gonna do if the GPS stops working? What are you going to do if all of your customers suddenly they get their phone out and it, it says they're in another country? Because uh, it's not a scenario most of us anticipate, but it's happening at the moment here in, in Jordan and other places in the Middle East. Um, it's happening in Estonia along the border with Russia, where the uh, Russians are jamming GPS. Finnair, the Finnish airline, have suspended flights in and out of Tartu airport because they can't rely on accurate GPS navigation. So, uh, yeah, a lot of things that we were relying on, the world has become a a maybe scarier place than uh, we thought it was going to be when uh, we built all these apps that rely on geolocation and just assume that it's going to work. Folks, I hope you found that interesting. Take it easy. Look after each other. I'll see you next time.